Hi. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to remotely control an ESP82-66 using an Android phone. I'll show you how to turn relays on, and turn off, as well as display messages on an LED dot matrix. This is the concept of how to control ESP8266 from Android application, demonstrated in this video. Before we begin, don't forget to click the subscribe button so you won't miss out on our future videos. Thank you. I'm using ESP8266 as the IoT device. On the ESP, it will be connected to a two-channel relay, which we'll use to control the switching on and off. Additionally, I'll also be using buttons to control the relays locally. In addition, I'm connecting an LED dot matrix that will display text sent from the Android device. On the Android device, I'll be installing an application I created using Kodular to remotely control the ESP. And, for communication between the Android device and ESP, I'm using the MQTT protocol. When we press the buttons in the application to control the relay, or sending text, the application will send an MQTT message to the broker. Then, the ESP will receive the message, and execute commands accordingly, such as turning on or off the relay, and displaying text on the LED dot matrix. When the relay is turned on, or off using the buttons on the ESP, or when its status is changed by another Android application, the ESP will send a message to the MQTT broker. Then, the application will receive and update the button status, and text according to the current status of the ESP. This is the ESP code used in the project. I'm utilizing the Arduino JSON version 7 library to process JSON data from MQTT messages, and the PubSub client library is used to implement the MQTT protocol. The topics used for publishing and receiving MQTT messages, as well as the Wi-Fi connection and MQTT broker address settings, are as follows. For setting up the LED dot matrix, I'm using 8 dot matrices. Then, here's the code for receiving MQTT messages, which filters and executes commands to control the relays according to the received messages. All files used in this video can be downloaded. I've placed the link in the video description. To communicate using the MQTT protocol in Kodular, I'm utilizing an additional extension called the ai 2 poho MQTT extension. You can find the official page, download the zip file, and extract it. We'll use this extension when working with Kodular. After downloading the extension, open the Kodular page, then proceed to import the extension in the Extension tab. Choose the extension file we downloaded, which should be in AIX format. Then, click Import from File and wait for the import process to complete. After the import is complete, a new component called URS PoO MQTT will appear in the palette, which we can use for MQTT communication. Before using it, fill in the MQTT parameters such as the broker address, client ID, client password, and other settings. These are the blocks that we can use in our program later for communicating using MQTT. The next extension that needs to be downloaded is the JSON to Dictionary, 
which allows us to convert JSON data from MQTT messages into a dictionary data structure. This enables us to process and manipulate the data more easily. The next step is to import the JSON to dictionary extension. The process is the same as importing the previous extension. This is the Kajular code for the ESP control application that I've created. In the designer, there are two buttons for controlling the relays, a text box for typing messages to be displayed on the LED dot matrix, and a button to send messages to the ESP. Don't forget to set MQTT parameters, such as the MQTT broker IP address, client ID, password, and others. And here are the code blocks that have been created. We start with initializing variables, including some variables in JSON format. I use the dictionary blocks to create variables in JSON format. Then, when initializing the screen, it will connect to the MQTT broker. Once the connection is established, it will subscribe to the broker and publish status messages to request the current status of the ESP. The trigger from each button will send a message to the broker to control the relays and the LED dot matrix. And when receiving a message from the ESP, it will change the color of the buttons according to the relay status sent by the ESP. Now let's see it in action. We can control the relay from the Android application. Additionally, we can also control the relay directly from the buttons. When the relay is controlled using the buttons connected to the ESP, the status will also be updated in the Android application accordingly. To display a message on the LED dot matrix, type the message in the text box and press the send text button. The ESP will then display the message on the dot matrix as per the one sent. To reset the display, press the reset button. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.